Good evening, members, and ladies and gentlemen in the public gallery. Uh, before we start, just to point out that the uh, instructions in the event of a fire alarm sounding, there are no practices planned tonight. Please leave by one of three exits. One, two, three. And we'll feed across the road under the canopy of uh, Waitrose. Can I ask that we all switch mobile phones to either off or to silent? This uh, is a public speaking event, and I would ask you all to uh, respect your neighbours and the committee. I ask for no booing, cheering, or uh, any other form of demonstration. It is a meeting held in public. It is not a public meeting. Okay. Um, in front of me, I just make the point that uh, we have the officers uh, Peter Cleveland, Head of Development Control, Tim Bryson, Senior Planning Officer, who is uh, the case officer here, and the Head of Planning, Elizabeth Sims. Item number one on the agenda, the minutes of meeting which took place on the 16th and the 17th of May have been laid on the table for the last 30 minutes. Are you content? I'd sign them as a true record of, that meet, of those meetings. Thank you. Emma, apologies for absence. Uh, we have a uh, apologies from councillors Mike Ban, Brian Adams, Carol Coburn, Pat Frost, Stephen Hill, Nicholas Holder, David Hunter, and Stephen Mulner, and John Williamson. And uh, councillor Mrs. Patricia Ellis is attending as a substitute. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Decorations of interest. Uh, number for the meeting. Councillor Forrest. Oh, forgive me, Chairman. Um, can I just declare that I'm a trustee of Carey Shaw? Sorry, I should have mentioned it earlier. Thank okay, you. thank you very much indeed. Emma, have there been any questions from members of the public? Uh, none received, Chairman. Thank you. Let's move on to item A1 the erection of 50 dwellings together with associated work details. Uh, or well, details pursuant of WA 2014-1330 as amplified by the email received on the 12th of May 2016 at land between Birch Road and Pound Farm, Pond Farm, sorry, First Lane Farm, Farncombe. Starting off, I think, uh, Peter Cleveland, you wish to start the meeting. Yes, th thank you, Chairman. Um, just by way of introduction to the application, I will make a few points to assist members in relation to um, their proposals tonight. This application seeks approval of reserve matters following the outline approval of WA 2014-1330, which approved the principle of up to 50 dwellings on the application site, as well as the detailed means of access. As such, the principle of development for housing and means of access has been approved and is not a matter to be considered this evening. The matters which members are being asked to consider are those which remained reserved at the outline stage. This includes the appearance, scale, landscaping and layout of the proposed development. Officers are fully aware of the strong concerns regarding flood risk on and off site. However, this matter was debated during the consideration of the outline application prior to resolving to approve the outline scheme. Members agreed that the principle of the drainage design for surface water in particular was acceptable and the final detail and calculation would be secured by condition. The final details are being dealt with under the discharge of condition process and this information is currently under review by the Lead Local Flood Authority. It would not be reasonable to expect this detail to be agreed ahead of this application nor can the Local Planning Authority insist upon this. The outline approval includes a condition restricting the discharge of any surface water to the adjacent watercourse to be no greater than the existing field runoff rate. As such, the detailed scheme would, re would be required to comply with this condition. In addition, the development cannot commence until this detail is agreed, which ensures that should, inf should the recommendation for approval um, be accepted tonight for the reserve matters, the council remains in control of the surface water drainage detail. As a point of fact, I just wanted to confirm following a question on the site visit, I'd like to confirm to members, um, and that is that the watercourse along the northern boundary of the site is within the applicant's ownership. 
But as already noted, drainage is a matter to, that has already been debated, but I just wanted to confirm that response um, to the question for, for members. Members will be aware that the recommendation is subject to comment from the Environment Agency regarding Condition 12 of the outline approval. Condition 12 requires a scheme to be submitted clearly demonstrating that no land raising will take place outside of Flood Zone 1 prior to the approval of the Reserve Matters Scheme and should any land raising be proposed, satisfactory flood storage compensation shall be formally agreed. Information has been submitted on these grounds indicating the land levels would not be raised. However, we have not got final agreement at this stage from the Environment Agency. Officers are confident that this, this technical matter can be addressed, so, therefore, uh, so officers are therefore asking members to allow further cons consultation with the Environment Agency to secure agreement on this condition prior to the issuing of the Reserve Matters application decision. Should members resolve to approve the application this evening, officers are proposing a revised recommendation to deal with this matter prior to any approval of the reserve matters being issued, which would read as follows. This is up on your screen, but I shall read it for you. So, Recommendation A is that subject to the receipt of written confirmation of agreement from the Environment Agency regarding the suitability of detail to discharge the requirements of Condition 12 of the outline permission, within three months of the committee date, the following are matters, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale, these being the approved matter, the reserve matters, sorry, be approved subject to conditions on pages 39 to 46 of your agenda and the amendment to condition 12 of the outline approval on the, I'm uh, sorry, of, of the reserve matters approval on the update sheet. There's also a recommendation B that if requirements of recommendation are not met, permission be refused for the reason as set out. The applicants have failed to comply with the requirements of Condition 12 of the outline permission, therefore failing to demonstrate that the proposed scheme would not impede flood flows, result in the loss of flood storage space, or protect people and property from risk of flooding, contrary to requirements of paragraph 103 of the MPPF and policies D1 and D4 of the Council's local plan. I hope this is helpful to members, and I'll pass over to Tim Bryson to take, take you through the detailed plans and issues in more detail. Thank you, Chairman. Peter. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Peter. Members, starting off with, this, with the site location, um, the site measures 2.47 hectares and is located to the east of Furs Lane in Farncombe. The site is undeveloped and comprises natural grassland surface with several trees along boundaries, with the exception to the western boundary which fronts Furs Lane. Uh, Furs Lane runs to the west of the site and Birch Road to the south and southeast. Uh, which can both contain existing residential properties. This is the proposed site plan. Uh, so the application is a reserve matters application following outline approval for up to 50 dwellings. The matters for consideration under the application are the appearance, landscaping, layout and scale of the development. The proposed site plan shows outlines a layout for 50 dwellings, open space and children's play area. The level of affordable housing provision within the scheme remains as that approved at outline stage, providing 40% on site. The new access road feeding into the site will be taken off the existing roundabout here, which has already been approved at outline stage. There is indicated in the layout uh, three driveway accesses onto Furs Lane to serve three of the proposed dwellings. Um, this aspect, aspect has specifically been brought to attention of the County Highway Authority under the current application, who have raised no objection. I draw members' attention to their detailed comments on page 14 of the agenda. This is a more detailed and closer up uh, site layout plan. Uh, each residential dwelling would have allocated off-road parking spaces and private outdoor amenity space, uh, including the one-bedroom dwellings. The internal access road would feed into the site where halfway, at halfway point, uh, there would be a, uh, a feature square would be proposed. Um, this has been designed to be a, a more of a shared surface, uh, change in surface material as well to um, act as a natural traffic calming uh, mechanism. Um, moving further into the site, uh, the road would bank north and south, leading around to clusters of dwellings and shared courtyard parking areas. In here. 
The northern part of the site would be landscaped to include a large area of public open space and a locally equipped area of play, which is here. Additional tree planting is proposed throughout the site, which is the small green uh, dots you can see here on the plan, as well as a mixture of boundary treatments to the residential plots. Notably, the front boundaries of the, of the dwellings, which are front Furs Lane over here, would have a 0.9 metre high black estate railing, as well as across the northern part of the site here, uh, providing um, views through um, and providing a subtle separation distance, separation barrier between the road and the area of open space. This plan shows the positions of the types of dwellings within the site. Uh, the layout of the mix of dwellings is considered to be well balanced, distributed in small groups. Uh, so the yellow being the one bedroom properties, orange two bedroom, red three bedroom and purple four bedroom. And then just showing members the position of the affordable dwellings within the scheme, um, distributed in small clusters as encouraged by officers. Um, in purple is the uh, social rent and shared ownership in the blue. This is a parking plan, um, really just show members the parking areas for the properties. Uh, in blue is the parking on open land. Uh, spaces in red are under garages or carports, and in green are visitor spaces um, sited throughout the site. Uh, cycle storage is also provided within each dwelling, um, which you can see here outlined in, these, in brown. Uh, materials. This materials plan shows that the t really the distribution of two different shades of clay roof tile proposed throughout the scheme. Um, this shows really how it will be distributed. Uh, full details of materials are outlined on page 8 of the agenda. However, very much the traditional design is proposed within the scheme. Members, I'll now go through these street scenes provided with the application. Uh, for each, I've indicated in red here clearly where the, what street scene we're looking at and where it is shown on the, on the, location, on the uh, layout plan. Um, so starting off at the site entrance uh, here, we have the three properties that would front Furs Lane. Um, the two ones here centred around the access point would mirror each other in design, and this one here um, of varying form. Street scene two, just turning into the site and looking south, uh, really you can see um, just a variety of the residential properties that are proposed. Um, very much traditional uh, traditional appearance with traditional materials. Moving further along on the same side of the ro internal road, um, again, just showing you the separation distances and design. Turning to the northern side of the internal access road, here that's the, the um, flank elevation of the property that fronts Furs Lane. And again, looking within the site here. And again, just capturing the street scene from this side. Moving round to the north, northeast part of the site. Um, again, front of elevations facing this way. Um, really just to give you an idea of the design. And again here, um, this would be the rear elevations of these properties here, which would face over the open space area. And again, internally, street scene five and street scene six opposite. Uh, some dwellings aren't captured within the street scene drawings. Um, However, I can provide elevations of these here. This is plots 23 to 25 and plot 26. And plots 27 and 28. Um, all these properties are located in the southeastern part of the layout plan. just run members through some site photographs now. This is the existing roundabout where the access um, would be taken from. Um, here the road would feed in on both sides. Uh, pavements leading in as well on both sides into the site. Uh, 
um, from the same position, just looking slightly north. So one of the properties proposed would front the road here, just off the roundabout. And again, looking south on Furs Lane, um, really just to show you the start of the, you could say the street scene coming down Furs Lane. And the view north, this is an existing bungalow on, on Furs Lane. Uh, the roundabout is just out of shot here, and the application site on the right-hand side. So street scene of three properties would be here. Let's just show members um, some existing dwellings on Furs Lane. They are predominantly two-storey on the western side, and on the eastern side they are more chalet bungalow and bungalow-style properties. And on Birch Road to the south of the site, um, very much a mixture of bungalow and chalet style bungalow properties. As you get further towards the eastern side and you turn a corner, they become two storey, leading up round the corner. And then turning to some views from within the site itself, it's uh, so looking east. On the right hand side here are some mature trees. Um, these are subject to um, crowning up to four metres and, and pruning back um, to allow for better use of the garden spaces for the proposed properties. Really just the north boundary, just showing the mature trees along the north boundary where that watercourse is. The rear existing properties on, on Birch Road, um, some of the neighbouring properties there. Um, it's acknowledged the outlook from these properties would change. Um, however, the position of the dwellings are such that no material harm would be caused to the amenities of these occupiers. And again, just viewing west across the site back towards Furs Lane. So I hope that's been helpful in just showing you a refresher really of the, of the site for those that couldn't make the site visit. In terms of determining issues with this application, I draw members' attention to the right-hand side of the slide. Uh, landscaping appearance, layout and scale, all part of this application. Um, in looking at those, um, we look at the visual impact and character of the area and impact of residential amenity. Uh, the site is undeveloped and forms part of the natural landscape in the area. The principle of development on the site has been established at outline stage. Obviously, consider result and visual impact remains obviously a planning judgment to make on the scheme. Overall, officers satisfy the visual imp impact of the proposal is acceptable and provide a high quality residential scheme for the site and local area. Impact on residential amenity, uh, this of course remains a, a planning judgment. Uh, officers are satisfied the proposed siting and layout of the residential development respects bordering neighbouring dwellings and will not cause material harm. The above matters are, of course, matters of judgment for members this evening. I can turn members' attention now to the update sheet. Um, really just to note the amendments there to the report, the content of two additional representations received and officers' response to them, and the small amendment to condition 12. As outlined earlier by Peter, uh, officers are proposing revised recommendation which would be recommendation A, following discussions with the Environment Agency, which is to be as follows. That subject to receipt of written confirmation of agreement from the Environment Agency relating to the suitability of detailed discharge, the requirements of condition 12 of the outline permission within three months of the committee meeting, the following matters of appearance, landscaping, layout and scale be approved, subject to conditions on pages 39 to 46 of the agenda and the amendment to condition 12 on the update sheet. Uh, thank you, Chairman. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Tim. And uh, thank you for the photographs that we can see and the street scenes that are also uh, worthy of note. Um, right, we now turn to uh, public speaking. Uh, I think you've all understood what we're looking for. So can I first introduce the objector, Mr. Alvarez, to speak? Okay, right there. Yes, right there. Sorry. And the. Yes, and it's the big 
black button to uh, get the microphone live. Good evening, councillors. I'm here to represent residents of Birch Road to voice again our objection to the proposed development as we strongly feel that the flooding and contamination issues raised have not been addressed by the officers. We find it unsatisfactory that new information was uploaded 48 hours before this meeting. Perhaps members can ask the officers why this is. Our concerns are as follows. Suds advice and pro forma form version 1 2.3 states it will not now be acceptable to leave the design of suds to a later stage to be dealt with by planning conditions. Despite this mandate, our understanding is these decisions will be left to the officers rather than the members. Why is this requirement now being ignored? Suds maintenance. The developer is proposing to locate suds in the gardens of the new dwellings. The LLFA has raised concerns regarding the maintenance of suds. How will the developer's management company be able to gain access to each and every sud to ensure that they are regularly maintained? The developer confirmed ownership of the watercourse in May 2015, but haven't maintained it, despite agreeing it's their responsibility. Residents keep this clear to avoid the watercourse from failing. How can members be expected to take any plan by the developer to maintain the watercourse seriously if they haven't complied with their obligations over the last 12 months? The suds flow rate. Condition 20 requires that if suds are to be used, then they must disperse water at greenfield runoff rates, which the developer provided of circa 0.9 litres per second. I have a voicemail from the officers on the 18th of May of this year stating that this condition must be adhered to. The developer has now submitted a second set of new calculations which have substantially increased both the greenfield runoff rate and the suds flow rate. How can members and officers be certain which of the developer's figures should be trusted? Members may wish to also ask why they've changed and why they were uploaded only 48 hours ago. The outline planning was agreed based on runoff rates of 0.9 litres per second. Members should ask why condition 20 is being ignored and the new calculation being accepted without being assessed by the members and the relevant bodies. Getting these calculations wrong could be catastrophic for Birch Road and Tiltham's residents. The culvert pipe in the northern watercourse is not fit for purpose, as demonstrated by the flood events of 2013-14. The pipe runs into another drainage pipe located under the main London and Portsmouth railway line that has a similar problem. We expect the developer to carry out a full survey of the existing culvert pipe to ascertain if it could cope with the extra demand, as opposed to hoping for the best. How can the members approve this plan without knowing if the pipe will cope in an extreme event when the development has been built? You will all be familiar with the Bybrook Barn Garden Centre versus Kent County Council lawsuit, which won due to an unfit culvert pipe not being assessed prior to development. The flood map challenge. Some of the new dwellings are to be built on land that is in flood zone 2, which will make them uninsurable. The developer stated that they will only lodge a flood map challenge once full planning permission has been granted. They believe that the Environment Agency has already accepted their proposed hydraulic modelling. The agency refuted this, refuted this claim, as confirmed on page 21 from the officer's report, 17th of June last year. How can the members make a decision on this development without sight of a formal written uh, decision from the Environment Agency regarding the flood map challenge? And finally, contamination. The Eco-Environmental Report has identified a high reading of the contaminant benzoate pyrene recording a soil sample taken from borehole TP7. This is extremely harmful to both humans and animals and travels easily through ground and water and can cause cancer. Why have additional borehole tests not been carried out to check if further contaminants are present in the areas most prone to flooding, at least the children's play area? Why do you need to, us to tell you to do this as well? Until further sampling has been completed, how can members approve the plans with a clear conscience? Before deciding the colour of bricks and the trees you'll plant, we would expect you as members to know the answers to the big questions before proceeding any further and move to defer the application until you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. So, moving on now to uh, Mr. Richard Mendes. Good evening, members. My name is Richard Mendez. I am acting as an agent of Crowdes Homes Limited. Members, the scheme before you for consideration this evening comprises a reserve matters application for the erection of 50 residential dwellings together with associated works, pursuant to outland application. Those matters reserved to this stage are appearance, 
landscape, layout, and scale. Crowded Homes and his design department is extremely proud of the scheme that has been put forward and has worked extremely hard with officers of the borough and county council to achieve an appropriate design solution for the site. Crowdes is committed to work with the local community in the areas within which it develops. To this end, the scheme has evolved with input from town council throughout the process, taking in consideration comments made at the outline application as well as in the pre-application discussions. During the processing of the application, further revision has been made to address the technical queries raised by the officer. As a result, the scheme presented to you this evening has no statutory consultation objections. The appearance of the proposed dwelling has been carefully chosen to reflect the vernacular architecture of the area. A special care has been taken in the selection of the materials used to ensure that the design fits harmoniously into its surroundings. The landscape design proposed plays an important role in creating the setting of the new house and follows the principles set out in the outline application. New elements like the feature square enhance the proposal and contribute to the place making. The layout of the building will face the internal road network and provide a strong private realm clearly separating the private rig gardens. The key buildings are located throughout the development and single buildings or a pair of semi-detached homes. The scale of the proposed dwellings is predominantly two stories in height in line with the local surroundings area. The proposal ensures that no land raising will take place outside of flood zone one and a proposed level has been pro provided in accordance with the flood risk assessment submitted in the outland application. The proposed application takes account of such strategy and recommendations made in the flood risk assessment submitted as part of the outland application. Pre-commencement conditions were imposed at that stage, which deal with the drainage and, floods and flood risk matters. Details have been submitted to discharge those conditions separately on the 22nd of April and made valid on the 26th of April. The proposal incorporates 40% on-site affordable housing in a mix and tenure split stated in the Section 106 agreement. In conclusion, the application before members for determination this evening comprised an appropriate design solution for the site, situated in a sustainable location. The scheme make, makes best use of the site and the applicant therefore respectfully requests that members accept the officer recommendation and resolve to grant reserve matters approval. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mendes. Members, your turn. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've been asked by ward members, Liz Weekly and uh, David Hunter, who are both unable to appear, um, to put the ward members' views and that of Birch Road and Tilsom's. I've also been present at a meeting with Anne Milton, where some of these matters were discussed. So although I wouldn't say I know everything about this matter, I do have some background, and I'd especially like to thank the officers for their help to put online the up-to-date SUDS, as I now understand it's received, and to discuss matters with the residents, and also for the helpful site visit. Although SUDS is not really up for discussion this evening, I must put the point which has already been put by the um, speaker earlier that this is a vital consideration for both the neighbours in Birch Road and also further down the line in Tilsom's. I think it's a pity that the um, 
87-page drainage report will only put on the website on the 23rd of May. It's dated April, and perhaps if uh, it had been placed, if it had been sent and placed on the website earlier, we might have been able to, to deal with all matters today. I would certainly prefer this meeting to be deferred so we can consider everything in a final meeting. It makes far more sense. Although I would say that the um, new condition on the update sheet does assist. I won't go into details of the floods. You, you have all received photographs of them. Um, but it is important that the runoff, from surface runoff, does not increase. And I understand from people who understand these reports better than I do that um, the current suggestions are that it, the runoff will increase over greenfield runoff rates. But again, I'm no expert. I also think, and this case has already been mentioned, uh, the By Book Barn case is still relevant law. I have checked that with the legal department by email of the 20th of April. So that is a consideration we must also, also take account of. We didn't look at the culvert at the uh, on-site visit, but again, you have photographs. I don't think it's fit for purpose. purpose. We could ask the developer to consider a new ditch, so at least we would know that it would be working and could, would be easier to maintain by the eventual management company. One of the major problems from the ward members is the exit by the three houses, proposed exit of by the three houses into Firth Lane. Although I appreciate that Sire County Council have said it's all right, I think it is important to look at it again. We saw on the site visit the roundabout, the bus stop, and one can easily imagine with buses stopping there, people coming from Northbourne, cars coming out of the new development, it's an accident waiting to happen. So again, I think in due course that must be looked at again. In fact, you quite often see um, cars going, shall I say, over the roundabout rather than around the roundabout. Bear with me one moment. We're also concerned about um, the borehole and possible seepage, but you've already heard that from um, the resident who spoke. Although the um, new condition is, as I say, helpful, I would ask that in view of the Bybrook barn case, I would ask that um, that that this matter does a, a return to this committee for final decisions. I say that because under that particular case, the local authority was found liable in civil proceedings because they had not taken enough or due consideration of the flooding problems further down the line or downstream, and which is the reason why I think it would be better to have a new ditch. Again, as I say, I would prefer this to be deferred anyway. 
um, but you will appreciate from what I've said and what you've heard from um, John that there is deep concern by the residents and there should be by the future residents if um, we don't get this right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councillor. Sorry, Councillor Dinas. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I agree a lot of what my colleague has just said. It's always so disappointing when we have absolutely no idea how this scheme is going to work with the SUDs. And also, I am extremely concerned about the contamination. But if I just ask a, a couple of questions for clarity. Um, firstly, the, the page six, which is the mix of homes. I think I'm quite disappointed really that the market homes there is no one bedroom houses. Yeah, you know, virtually every meeting we have on planning we, we talk about our younger generation trying to get houses in our local area, yet there is no one bedroom market house available and I think that's extremely disappointing. Um Yet when you look at some of the other percentages for three bedroom, it's currently 56.7 and its recommendation is 40%. Yet there's none when it comes to the one bedroom. I think it's extremely disappointing that that hasn't been considered. And I think I'm sure my colleagues would also share that disappointment. Can I just confirm a couple of points? And it may be that having read so many documents over the last few days and other meetings, I'm getting cross-eyed. But there are a couple of things I'd like some clarity on. It talks about the gate, the emergency access gate. And when you look at the proposed site plan, there appears to be a road. But I can't see anything within a documentation which is a requirement to maintain a road. And it just seems it's just a requirement to have an emergency gate. But that may well be covered somewhere, and I've missed that, so some clarity on, on that, please. Um, page 18 talks about the Surrey Wildlife Trust. And the last paragraph says it doesn't appear to specifically address their comments made in the outline application. Now, I do appreciate there are further comments made within this document, but I don't know, as I don't wasn't present for the um, 1130, whether those comments actually relate to what's in the documents itself. So have those um, comments made in that original application been addressed or not? Um, If I leave it as that, and I'll come back if I need to. Thank you. Councillor Dean, uh, before we go any further, uh, are you proposing deferral? Are you? I think that was proposed actually by my colleague during, during his we need a, We need a seconder before I ask the officers to respond. Councillor Forresky. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, we already know from the previous application that the principle, principle of development has been established. However, I'm confused by recommendation A and I think it sets a dangerous precedence when we don't have all the information that we have in front of us. So I would um, support my colleague beside me in a deferral until we get that information. Thank you, Chairman. Members, we have a proposal and a seconder for deferral until we get further details particularly of condition 12, I think it is, isn't it? Um, do people want to speak to that deferral motion? Councillor Hesse. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I must say, I quite like the look at this scheme, and I'm quite minded to, uh, to, to support the officers. However, the question of drainage, it seems to me, is critical. And I certainly can't make a decision either way until I know what the answer to that is. So I would be very keen to support a deferral. Can I ask the officers to comment, uh, and then I'll come back to you. Oh, Councillor Ellis then first. 
Brian Ellis. Thank you, Chairman. I find myself in a very, very difficult position, and I think it's going to be a position uh, that we members will find ourselves in in subsequent applications for reserve matters where we have already granted outline planning permission, and in doing so, including the requirements for land drainage, surface water runoff, runoff, sewage disposal, and so on. And in this case, we have already done that. If I look at that application there as, a mo uh, as it is at the moment, purely that application itself for reserve matters, I see no reason for deferring this application at all. Uh, and the suggestion that uh, uh, the application be deferred, I don't believe is relevant to the reserve matters. It appears to be relevant to those matters that we agreed were properly addressed in the previous outline application. So I cannot at this time support a suggestion for deferral. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. Officers, do you want to uh, make comment at this point? Yes, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I think that the point we, we would make, and Councillor Ellis sort of touched on it there, that the, the application we're looking at is the reserve matters, so it's those matters of landscaping appearance, layout and scale. The technical matters were looked at in principle at the outline stage and there was long debate about the principle of what the drainage design would look like. And in effect, in summary, it's, it's on-site attenuation of surface water drainage and that would be released at appropriate rate to, to the field, uh, to, to, the, to the water course at the field runoff rate. And there's a condition on the outline approval requiring any drainage design to be dealt with um, and adhere to the existing field runoff rate. Um, what we've got to be mindful of is if we're being unreasonable in, in taking a view that we're requiring all technical detail to be agreed in the reserve matters scheme when we've applied conditions following a debate around the discussion of the technical matters which adequately deal with it from an officer's point of view. I appreciate that in, it, it might be favourable to have that detail up front, um, but it is a technical matter and with with the majority of other schemes, that matter is always dealt with by condition through our condition discharge process. Um, we don't ordinarily make the information available online until it is agreed by the technical consultees, but in this instance, in consultation with the ward members and understanding that it is a sensitive matter, we have made it publicly available, and that's why it's appeared on the website and reference has been made to that. Um, so officers' sort of position on, on this is there's two matters to be considered. There's the matter to, for tonight in terms of the design and, and matters. There's also technical matters which ordinarily would be dealt with through officer consultation and we have made it publicly available contrary to our usual process so members of the public can see that prior to making a decision. So officers would, our, our advice would be that we consider the matters before us tonight and the technical matters, as discussed in the outline, are left to be dealt with a dis discharge or condition. So that is my view, but see, I'll, I'll leave members to, to consider that. But hopefully that's helpful. Thank you, Chairman. Very helpful. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Councillor Stennett, uh, and then we'll take the vote on deferral. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd just like to point out to my colleagues here, there is a serious problem with that drainage on the northeast side of that. It, 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 it's a maximised drain, there's no overflow into the ditches and it floods out and we must be very aware of where it goes downstream and so we don't know who's getting that water because it seems fairly, pardon the pun, wishy-washy to me, which you wouldn't want water in your house. And secondly, the, the, the houses that are coming out onto the roundabout I think should be turned round and the drives should be uh, come out onto the main site road and the house in the corner where the bus stop is should be deleted altogether. So that is a, a design statement and I think that that is too dangerous to have cars coming out on uh, that roundabout and also the other one coming out over a lay-by with a bus stop there with children milling around, ladies with push chairs. I don't think that's right. So I too think that we should either go for a redrawing of the design or, or a deferral so that we've got the whole picture in front of us. Thank you. Thank you. We are talking about deferral, so can I put the vote? Those in favour of a deferral at this point in time, please show. Okay. That's one, two, three, four, five, 
Eight, nine. Those against? One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Yes. So, Councillor William. Sorry, Elizabeth Sims. Ch Chairman, just, just for the record, could we be absolutely clear about the matters that the committee are expecting the applicant to address during this period of deferral? So there's absolutely no ambiguity. Thank you very much. Councillor Williams, first of all. Um. As Councillor Stennis has already said, there is a grave concern about the um, houses facing the road and exit along in onto Furs Lane. That certainly should be looked at. Um, I would like more information on the possible seepage from the borehole. Um, and if possible, I think there, again, the, 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 the um, developer should consider um, the um, exactly where the water ends up and as I say having looked at the culvert um, I don't think it's fit for purpose so they may also have to consider whether um, there should be a new ditch um, dug out which would be easier to maintain thank you thank you when you talked about boreholes you mean also further boreholes into the play area and uh, to the north of the site yes i do thank you councillor ells thank you chairman one of my concerns and i, I did uh, mention this on site was uh, peter's just told us that the whole um, theory behind the the disposal of surface water that it goes into the water course along the northern boundary but that isn't part of this application site, so we have no control over that. Um, if it does belong to the applicant, then surely the red line should be a bit higher up or at least outlined in blue to show that it's in the same ownership. It's not included in the application site, so how can we put any condition or, or talk about any sort of surface water disposal if it's going into an area which isn't part of the application? Thank you for that. Councillor Brown Ellis. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Ellis has uh, uh, really touched on a concern that I also have as well. The ditch along the northern edge of this site is, we have at last been informed, within the ownership of the applicant. Uh, it is unfortunately bordering uh, on a site that is used predominantly as nothing more than a tip. Uh, and uh, I think we have seen over two site visits that quite a quantity of rubbish has drifted into that ditch. It is overgrown, and whilst it's not part of this application site, given the acute concern of local residents as regards disp uh, drainage and surface water runoff and so, so on, I do believe that the applicant ought to be persuaded to clear that ditch totally so that it is more than adequate uh, for the purpose for which it was originally constructed. I appreciate it's not part of the application site. It is within the owner's uh, uh, the applicant's ownership and they really, I believe, should at least do something about it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Ellis. Councillor Foresky. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for allowing me to come back. Can I just ask the officers, please, um, what information they still require from the Environmental Agency? Peter? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Farazeski. Um, we, from the Environment Agency, are, we're waiting for their final agreement on the details of the land levels. So there's a condition requiring, prior to the approval of reserve matters, which is why the wording of the recommendation is, is such that that needs to be agreed before we issue a decision, is that they agree 
the detail submitted demonstrating that the land levels outside of flood zone one, so i.e. The, the public open space which runs along the north, is not being raised to avoid any increase in raising, flood, uh, in raising the land level and obviously um, eating into flood compensation area. Um, so we're waiting for confirmation just to confirm that they're satisfied that detail has been provided that land levels aren't rising in that area. Um, we've got information available that the EA are currently considering and they haven't, haven't come back during the lifetime of this application. Um, so that, that is the point we're waiting for them on. Hopefully that's helpful. I personally find that quite disappointing. The Environment Agency are so slow to respond to what is a fairly, you know, this application has been on the table since the 13th of January. You are, one would have thought that they would have uh, been able to respond rather more rapidly. Councillor Forescu, you want to come back? Yeah, just very quickly, Chairman. I think it may be prudent that we push the issue to include as a reason for the deferral. Thank you. First of all, Councillor Byam. Thank you. Yes, I, I think the question about the, the, the ditch um, and the problem of clearance is, is clearly of concern, but it should actually be to the joy of the residents of Tiltham's Green that that ditch is insufficient because that, it will only increase the flow of water past their door if indeed the, uh, it is cleared, which we obviously hope and, and expect it to be to do so. Uh, all of the route from the corner of that field, that ditch, leading to where it finally discharges into um, the riverway or the, 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 the canal um, is outside of the ownership clearly of this particular applicant and a lot of it is within Guildford Borough Council's own area. Uh, the responsibility of keeping ditches if, if indeed it is their ownership or indeed it's Hyperion ownership. So you've got, you've got a whole range of different situations not least of which, of course, going the, the culvert that goes under the railway line. Um, so uh, I personally, although I would expect the ditch to be cleared and fit for purpose, it will increase flow further down the line at a faster rate in, in periods of, of flood situation, if there was floods or high, high rain, rainfall. And as a simple mind, I can't see how much increase of water can come from this, uh, this development because there's a few extra houses on it. Um, it's, it's the same area of land as anything else. Uh, and, of course, this is only one small part. That, that ditch supports a whole range yeah, of different yeah. places further back along the, the line. Um, so this is just one minor element of what is happening in the, in the water flow and discharge of this, uh, this drain drain water. Councillor Hersey. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, uh, condition 20, 21 and 22 talk about the requirement to submit um, a scheme or, and a uh, requirement to submit details. Is there anything that actually compels the developer to do anything to deliver whatever might um, be described in either of those schemes or what they've been requested to detail? And if there isn't anything, can we strengthen those conditions to make sure that any sale of property is contingent upon the management facility or whatever these schemes propose is actually up and running and operational? Councillor McLeod, please. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> I think, to be fair to the officers, Elizabeth needs a very clear answer to the question. I had a number of other things suggested for reconsideration, particularly the access and so on. And my understanding, we very clearly decided that on, on the first application. And uh, I might well agree that the access is not right. I don't, I don't know whether I would or wouldn't if I looked into it carefully. But as I understand it, we're not really in the position to question that at all. So I, I think we need a very clear answer on the things we're not expecting to come back to the officers. It seems to me the only issue we're really asking to be reserved on is drainage. And any other thing that's been discussed, I think this needs to be told very clearly whether we're asking for these other things to be reconsidered. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor McLeod. Uh, 
I think we've already agreed the drainage situation, so we're uh, in a peculiar situation there. What we're really looking at is the contamination issue and having that reported back. I think that's point number one on my list anyway. Councillor Dinas, I think you want to come back. Yeah, thank you. Um, can we also make sure we include the the mixture of homes as I raised before the debate on deferring claims, having no one bedroom homes and the percentage of the three and four bedroom compared to that. And although I wouldn't particularly want to speak on behalf of my colleague, I think the point he was trying to make about the access, it wasn't the access onto the road, it was the positioning of the houses, which is part of the design and the danger of where those houses were compared to the access. I think that was a point, but I'm sure if I'm wrong, uh, Councillor Stennett will correct me. Thank you. We have a slight problem there with Surrey County Council who've already approved that uh, access, I think. Councillor Ells. Uh, Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I, I think when we approved this at outline stage, it was all reserved matters apart from access, but the access was the main access, the main road in. It wasn't these private drives. Now, okay, Surrey County Highways have approved it, but then we know that they approve anything. They, you know, they'll approve a pedestrian crossing across the M25 if it was put before them. But so it's, it's just a, a simple matter of design. It, it's, it's not a hard thing for the architect or the developers or whoever to just turn the houses around. It's, it's only the parking. It's only two drives. But without being, don't, we don't want to be totally negative. I, I would like to commend the developers for this design because I think the actual design of the housing and the grouping of the houses and the way the, the access roads wind around into little, nice little spaces is, is very good and, and it's something I'd like to see more of. Thank you. Thank you. Totally agree with what you say. It did look at the street scene, I thought, made it look quite attractive. And uh, so we thank you for your professional opinion as well. <laughs> Councillor Patricia Ellis. Thank you, Chairman. I would like, if I may, to return to the point that uh, my colleague, Councillor Hess, raised um, regarding conditions 20, 21, and 22. Um, I think you have indicated that probably it's not appropriate, but I would say that flooding is of major concern in very many areas of the borough, and it's of serious concern in this particular area. I would like to ask the officers, if I may, for their confirmation regarding legislation relating to the maintenance and upkeep of the SUDs because it, I understand that there's no legislation in place to ensure that SUDs are maintained um, in the future, and this would be of serious concern should um, a major event happen, if there's flooding, but as I say, I would just like appreciate. I would appreciate confirmation from the officers as to how we can ensure that the suds are maintained and looked after into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hesse. You mentioned conditions twenty twenty one. 20, 21, and 22. Pages? Page 30. Page? Okay. I've got the right piece of paper. Oh, fr from uh, the previous application, didn't it? Yes, sorry. I was going to the wrong page. Peter Cleveland, do you want to come in? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I think you've, we've covered the point. The other um, just firstly on the conditions 20 to 21 that was on the outline approval and they're, they're listed in the report um, but there is the requirement through those conditions of the wording I've got them in front of me that requires um, as we've, we've sort of discussed on other schemes that requires the, any detailed scheme to be provided prior to occupation or prior to the occupation of the site so we've got the security through that um, so hopefully that, that satisfies that point and it delivers those improvements 
Um, the, the second question from Councillor Mrs Ellis, um, regarding the maintenance and upkeep, that would be drawn up through the management and maintenance company of the open space and on site, and we also, we also secure details of maintenance of SUDS through that, and that would be responsibility of the management company as well, so we feel there's an appropriate mechanism to deal with that um, through, through the section 106. There's a number of other questions. I don't know if you want me to come back on those now. Um, and maybe I'll just pull together, I think, the comments that I've made with regards to detail. We go back just for members to confirm to us. Um, with regards to the mix of homes, the, the detail of that was looked at in the outline stage. I appreciate it was reserved, but it was, it was set out in detail. And we've actually got an improved mix compared to what was set out at the outline stage. So whilst I appreciate there isn't any one-bed market homes, we've got a, a greater number of two- and three-bed homes rather than the larger four-bedroom four homes. So we have got an improved mix, but I accept that the point that there's not, not one-bed units. In terms of, I think, taken away from discussion and the points that you'd, you'd like us to go back on is the concern regarding the properties facing Furs Lane, so the frontage there. So it's not necessarily the access, but it's the orientation and the layout. Um, the only one point I'd add to that is Pardon? Sorry. And the access. Okay, we'll take that away. Um, I think the only point we, we would add to that as a comment from officers is we want to have an active frontage. You don't want an inward-facing development. So you want the development to look out and front the street scene. That is a good urban design principle. But we will take away and, and look what we can do there. Um, the point regarding contamination, we, we can seek further information. There was a comment from the, from the third party looking for that as well. I mean, our environmental health officer has already requested that information, so it's in the process of going through. Um, and the point regarding the SUDs, um, and to be able to be confident and clear that, that that has been agreed and come back with and confirm that to members. Clearing of the water course and further comment from the EA regarding the land levels. And I hope that picks up the, the points um, raised by members. I think there's Thank one you, further one. That's the Environment Agency to report, which is what we were going to get round to in recommendation A, wasn't it? Written confirmation from the Environment Agency. Thank you, Chairman. Yes. Councillor Patricia Ellis. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come back. I just would like to say that I'm very suspicious about the future of management companies. If the upkeep and maintenance of these suds, which are vital to the residents living in the area and also living downstream, I have, I have grave concerns that they will last at all and that they won't fold and that these suds will not be cared for properly and problems will occur. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gray, do you want to come? Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I mean, I, I've listened. I mean, listened to what's been going on and I, I supported the deferral because I think there are problems with the layout. I would like to re-emphasize my concern about the house that faces the bus stop, the adequacy of the space there. It's not necessarily the danger or a road issue. It's the whole logistics of that bus stop. Um, if a bus pulls in there, there's, there's less than one bus length between the bus that's standing there and the roundabout. Cars will overtake. So there are, con there are concerns in, in there, people assembling on it. I also had concerns about the location of the, the play area um, and that was in relationship to potentially the fact that it can't be raised, it, it's a uh, runoff, it, it has to be level. I think that was the response that was given to me, but whether something could be done about that. The overall design, I agree with, with other councillors, it's an excellent design. Um, if I could ask officers one thing, if the, the ditch is not within the site and the ditch is a problem and the, yeah. the ditch has not been, uh, not been uh, maintained up to now, would we not have a responsibility to ask for the applicant to put a new ditch within the site? And that would address the, uh, the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Sims, I think you're... Thank you. 
picking each other. Sorry, Chairman. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Gray. Um, in terms of the the suds and on and off site works and pick up condition 22 of the outline permission talks about on and off site drainage works to be submitted to an approved. So it'd be subject to an agreement by a technical drainage engineer whether a, a new drainage ditch would be required. And from my understanding of it, I, I don't know what benefit that would actually bring of providing it into site, given that everything drains into the north east corner by providing a ditch in sorry in the northwest corner providing a ditch all the way along the northern boundary when the flow is in a westerly direction i think i'm getting the right way into apologies let me start again so the flow is in an eastward direction so the flow the the lowest point of the, the site is in that northeast corner that is where the drainage will connect principally to the existing water course by improving or putting a new water course within the site along the northern boundary. I think Councillor Byron's picked up on it, it would speed up the process and, and the speed it runs through. Um, so the benefit, as I say, we'd have to refer back to a technical engineer on that, but I can't see the benefit of providing an additional ditch when you've got an existing water course that could be improved. We've got a condition that requires offsite, that can deliver offsite works if it's outside the red edge. Um, so I board against that but we could take further advice on that um, from engineers if if you would see fit on that <coughs> thank you chairman thank you members we, we have taken the vote on deferral and I think we are agreed that uh, the reasons for that center around the contamination issue the mixture of uh, homes the positioning of the houses on first lane the environmental agencies response and suds manage. Have I got everything there? Councillor Barn. Sorry to come in at the last minute. I was trying to draw your attention earlier on. Um, one of the points about, about the drainage situation is that the, the culverts that are there from their eastern, northeastern corner are the responsibility of Thames Water. So open, open ditches are the responsibility of the landowner. I understand that the culverts are the responsibility of Thames Water. Uh, and therefore, I don't know what, what situation we are in as a planning authority or whatever, or the, indeed the developer, to ask Thames Water to confirm that that culvert is fit for purpose, because that's the, uh, the main area. Uh, and of course, the final other culvert which I believe is the responsibility of the of, of National Rail that goes under the railway line a little bit further on. So you, you've got a mixture of responsibilities, but all of them outside of the site that we're talking about developing. Right, members, we have voted for deferral. Those points that I've raised, have I covered everything there? Uh, Mrs. Sims, are you happy with... Yes, Chairman, thank you. I think you've, you've identified five matters there. The, the first four, um, the positioning of the, the dwellings at the front, contamination issues, mix, and to get the final confirmation from the Environment Agency, I think are all, in the circumstances, legitimate reasons for you to defer it. What I would say is we will, on your behalf, um, seek additional clarification on all these drainage matters but I'm glad you're not making that a substantive reason to defer because for all the reasons Peter explained at the beginning, I think the applicant would probably respond by saying probably reasonably these matters were considered at the outline stage and have been established. But I'm hoping that on the basis of the other matters, which I think are legitimate matters to seek further clarification on, they will also offer up further clarification and comfort for you on the drainage matters and when we uh, return to committee, we'll be able to give you a comprehensive set of answers on all these matters. I hope that's helpful, Chairman. It is indeed helpful. <laughs> Councillor Ells. Just, uh, just clarification, really. I mean, we're, we're told when this came to us in the first stage, it was all matters reserved apart from the access. Now we're being told that we basically we sort of looked at the mix of the buildings and we've improved on that and we looked at the technical side of, of, of the surface water disposal but we didn't. We were told you're looking at everything's reserved apart from the access. So which, which is it? 
Elizabeth. Thank you, Chairman. Just, just to clarify, an outline application is seeking your permission in principle for a number of dwellings, but also that you should be satisfied that that number of dwellings is capable of being accommodated within the site area in an acceptable way in planning terms. And those matters that go to the heart of the principle, which do include contamination, flooding, um, what other matters am I thinking of? Um, access, yes, whatever they're, whatever they're proposing, have to be considered at that, that point in time. And that's why we require all the um, technical information up front with the outline permission, because to leave um, matters of principle in terms of can this satisfactorily in principle be, be accommodated in flood risk terms would be too late at that reserve matter stage. So what happens is you consider your flood risk assessment and you you grant permission as you did subject to the detailed uh, details matters pursuant to condition being mopped up through the through the, the discharge of conditions stage. So I see your point entirely, you know, at what point are you actually looking at the detail? But in fact, at outline stage, you're looking at the principle, including those important matters that go to the heart, and that does include the flooding issues. So I hope that's clear, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Members, we have agreed the deferral. We have agreed the points. So I thank you very much for your attention tonight when we will come back with the date for the next meeting on First Lane. Thank you very much.